Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank you for joining us on, the, on our second half of our live stream today, and we've got such a treat. I'm so excited. I've got two of my cousins that are here in service with us, and one of them is going to come sing. Her name is Donna Wolf. Come, Donna. Get a microphone. Come get ready to sing. Come, Jeffrey. Get on the piano. And, uh, you know, we're real down to earth here, so I'm just going to make this announcement up front. If I mess up on that piano, you just, you know, you just enjoy her singing. Amen? Amen. We're so glad to have them. Have them and their husbands here. And uh, get right in that mic so it'll go over live stream. Okay. Well, I threatened my sister before we came. She's always blabbed that I can sing, but I told her she better not tell her. Well... What she do but text her? She <laughs> said, you didn't tell me not to text. <laughs> but I am looking forward to leaving this world. Let yes. me tell you. Well, I told all my troubles goodbye. Goodbye to each heartache and strife. Oh, this world where my wrong cannot be my home. I'm bound for that land up in the sky. Oh, yes, I've walked and I talk with my Lord, and I feast every day on his word. Oh, heaven is near, and I might say here, goodbye, old world, goodbye. Now, don't you weep for this old girl when I'm gone. Yes, oh, because I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last all these feet, they're not gonna stay upon this ground. Cause I'm gonna rise with a shout, I'm gonna fly. I'm gonna run with my Lord up to the sky. For heaven is near, I'll not say he. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Oh, well, I won't have the blues anymore. And these tears forevermore. Oh, a day may be to say goodbye. For tomorrow I'll rise up and fly. Oh, heaven is near, and I'm not gonna stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. Oh, cause I won't have to leave here alone. All my feet won't stay up on this ground. Oh, they're gonna rise with the shout. I'm gonna fly. I'm gonna rise with my Lord up to the sky. Oh, heaven is near, and I'll not stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now, don't you weep for me when I'm gone. Stay up on this ground. We're going to rise with the shout. I'm going to fly. I'm going to ride with my Lord up to the sky. Heaven is near. I'll not stay here. Goodbye, world. Girl, we're gonna meet again over there, aren't we? <laughs> my goodness. Well, I'm kind of I'm kind of out of it this morning. I don't even have my Bible up there. You know, it's kind of hard to fight a battle without your sword, amen. Hallelujah. You know, <laughs> I mean, I want her to come. If I go home before I, uh, she does, I want her to come sing it. Uh, get my water, please. My water. 
come and sing, sing at my funeral because you know what? When I leave this earth, this is going to be a happy occasion for me. Now, it won't be for you, maybe for my children, but I'm telling you right now, it's going to be, I, I just, listen here to take your last breath here and then just take your next breath there. woo Hallelujah. That's shouting words, isn't it? Hey, Amen. All right, are we ready to get in the Word this morning? Swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy Word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught. The word of the living God, faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. You know, uh, and you know, in this house, you all know that all the years that I've been uh, preaching, that I don't usually even preach about the devil, but uh, you know, it uh, occurred to me, in fact, when I was studying last night and the Lord impressed on me to, to preach this message today, that uh, if we don't know how to defeat our enemy, then we stay defeated. And so sometimes we got to talk about the opposition so we can defeat it. Amen. And so in this house, we know that, uh, that we live on the Word, we live in the Word, we speak the Word, no matter what we see, feel, hear, or think, that the Word of God is alive, it's a living Word. I love knowing that, that you can read, uh, you know, you, you will never find all that there is to learn in this book because it is alive and because it's living, it's, it's like a... Um, uh, yes, it's a comparison to a, a flower. You know, when you plant a plant, uh, when you first look at it, uh, you maybe you read on the tag that it's an azalea, and then uh, it, but all you see is greenery, and then you go back and look at it again, and oh my goodness, there is some buds on that thing, and it's changed, although it's still an azalea. And so then you go back a few days later and, oh, my goodness, now it's changed again. There's all these beautiful flowers on there. And, and it's just awesome how the change is, although it's still an azalea. And that's how the Word of God is. That as you look into the Word of God, that, that it, it changes us from glory to glory to glory because of the knowledge of the Word. See, the reason, he said, the reason my people, he didn't talk about the world. He said, the reason my people perish is for the lack of, of knowledge and so what our goal is there's thank god there's not a new bible you know you know here's i hear sometimes you know people will say well i've just got to get some new messages or new word and i'm thinking well there's not any because it's the same word of god that same word that that was uh, spoken that was spoken in the days of old is the same word that is powerful as a two-edged sword. And that same word will rightly divide and cause the things to fall in place for us if we stay in our faith. Amen? Amen. And so today, we're going to talk about how to get rid of the devil. Is anybody with me today? Isn't that good news? Is that good news? You know, I look at the devil like mosquitoes at a ball game. If you if you ever gone to a ball game and you know you're sitting there and maybe it's one of your grandbabies playing and man you're trying to watch them you know do their thing and and here comes mosquitoes zzz, 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 you know and it's distracting you say that out loud it's distracting and that's what the enemy is. He's distracting, trying to distract you off of what the Word says and off of who you are and what you are. And, and, uh, and just enough, if he can distract you just enough to miss, miss them, hit the goal or, or miss it, you know, you're sitting there irritated because you missed it. But I'm telling you right now, today we're right on track and we're going to get all that God's got for us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So our first scripture, we're going to start out in Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. <clears throat> We're going to lay some foundation here first. Chapter 13. And uh, we're going to start with verse 30, uh, 24 and just kind of hang out there in Matthew 13 for a minute because we, we got some stuff to carry to uh, cover here. So Matthew 13 and verse 24. Say this out loud. This is Jesus talking. And he's talking to me. 
So, you know, and that's another thing. When you're studying and reading the Word of God, make sure that you know this book was written to you because if you're not careful, you'll be reading and you'll be, here's what you'll do. You'll go, well, they were, uh, he was talking to the disciples there or he was, uh, or that was King David. Oh, you know King David, but I'm not King David. So that can But see, you got to understand that this book was written if there was nobody else on the earth but you. God would have had this book recorded for you. And it's not just to have little stories. It's for you to have an exuberant, excellent, overcoming life in this earth and then to step over to what you got waiting on you. Isn't that wonderful? Woo, hallelujah. Well, I may get excited before I even get started here. Okay, verse 24, and we're going to read down through 30. Another parable, because you know Jesus taught in parables, and I love that too. Because you know, um, even with my lightning fast mind, I can grab hold of these of this. You know what he's saying. You know, um, I remember one time that, um, and I was uh, managing a store, and I had about five different denominations working under me, and none of them knew about the Holy Ghost or how it worked or anything. In fact, boy, some of them hardly believed in Jesus. <laughs> And so I was seeking the Lord one day, and I said, Lord, how can I, expl- how can I explain to them what this is? And uh, I saw it just as clear, and, uh, and I thought, thank you, thank you, Lord, that, that you not only taught in parables, but you're still teaching in parables. And how he showed it to me, because, see, a lot of times the, uh, the, the uh, sorry, excuse me, the enemy will, uh, will persuade you that you don't need the Holy Ghost. That, you know, you got born again and you got saved and so that's going to get you to heaven and so that's what's important. Because, see, the enemy knows if you are filled with the Holy Ghost that you're filled with the power from on high. You know, I say it like this, that if I had an old dirty glass and, and I scrubbed it out clean, that's what the blood did for me. Boy, I cleaned that thing up, shiny clean. Made me brand new. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. And now I got this shiny, clean vessel that I want it filled up with something. And that something needs to be the power of God. Amen. Amen. But see, you gotta uh, you gotta understand that that uh, that being filled with the Holy Ghost is an important thing to our Father because it's a gift. And so anyway, I was seeking the Lord one time, and I was asking Him. I said, "How can I how can I explain this to them?" Because you know, they, they barely even believe in Jesus, you know. You know and, uh, and here's what he showed me. It was just clear as a bell. He showed me in the kitchen. Now, y'all know I don't like to cook, so you already know that. And so he showed me in the kitchen with a, a, an old-time egg beater. You remember those things you had to crank and turn? Y'all know. Now, y'all young ones don't know what we're talking about. But anyway, if you had to whip up some egg whites, it took you forever. You were there working yourself to no end, trying to get those whites whipped up. And he let me see myself doing that. And then he said to me, now you can finally get this accomplished working and laboring yourself. Or, and he showed me getting an electric mixer and just plugging it into the outlet and holding it. And it did all the work. He said, that's what the Holy Ghost is for you. That if you'll plug in to the power source, let him do the work. Isn't that powerful? That's powerful. And so that's what I shared with them. And I'm telling you right now, those five denominations, well, you know, of course, I was, I was a manager there, so, you know, they wanted to, they, you know, they wanted to hear what I had to say <laughs> because they wanted to, their job. And, uh, and so, man, I tell you what, the, uh, we had miracles up in that place. There was one man got two brand new knees. You know, and, uh, and he, was, he was sitting down in the floor at my store. He was sitting down there unstrapping those braces. And the doctor said, if you ever put your weight on them legs, the, the, the bone, your, your bones will, will break through the skin. And, and, uh, and you know what? God just miraculously healed him. He sat down in the middle of my store and he began to unstrap. And I'm telling you, I had customers in there. It was crazy. Y'all hear me? It was wild and crazy. He got up from there and began to run the length of that store and doing squats. And you know, his little wife worked for me. And I want to say they were, um, I believe they were Nazarene, I believe. I think, I think it was Nazarene. And she is sobbing and crying because she don't know what in the world is going on. And here, you know, and uh, I'm telling you, uh, that, you know, that was probably, I don't even know how many years ago. And, you know, he's still healed. 
Did you know that? He's still healed. You know why? Because when God does it, he does it. Amen. Now, the, let me tell you something about your healing today and your miracles. And we're fixing to get in this message. That when you know that you know that you've been healed, that you were touched by the mighty hand of God, that that word is working in you, let me assure you that the enemy will come back to steal your healing. He will come back to tell you, oh, I must have, I must have not, but I, I guess I didn't get healed. I guess, look at here, I've still got this, uh, these symptoms have come back. Because can I tell you that the devil didn't go on vacation and he's not sitting in the corner somewhere eating a box of chocolates and watching TV. He is out to kill, steal, and destroy, and he's coming after your faith. He could care less if you've got 15 houses and 25 cars, but he does not want you to have faith in God because he knows the one thing to please God is your faith. And so you know what? When he comes back with the symptoms, well, you know, and I find it amazing how that every testimony and everything's kind of geared that way this morning. But when he comes back with the same symptoms, you've got two choices. You can either accept it, receive it, and deny that you were ever touched by the hand of God, or you can get up in his face and say, you know what? You can peddle this junk somewhere else because if I die, I will die in my faith. I will be proclaiming that Jesus Christ is alive and I am here. Healed by his stripes. See, that's up to you and I. We got we to gotta stand against the enemy. Amen? All right, here we go. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now, let me stop right there. Can I tell you that tares and wheat, when they grow up, they look alike? You can't tell which one's which because it looks just the same. Okay, let's keep reading. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then, then appeared the tares also. So let's say this, the tares had no fruit. Say that out loud. The tares had no fruit. That was how you could tell, even though they looked alike, same, same shape, same everything. But one of them did not produce fruit. Okay, here we go. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy, say an enemy. An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, which means no. For those of you who don't understand King James Version. <laughs> Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now keep in mind, this is a parable that Jesus is teaching us a principle here. <clears throat> so the first thing is that just because someone says, they know the Lord or the man upstairs or then it is our job to watch for fruit. You know, I say it like this. We are not judges and if you are found judging, you're sitting in God's seat. See, we're not judges in this earth. But we are fruit inspectors. So what I'm going to say is even though it may look like wheat, and it may sound like wheat, but if there's no fruit produced, why would you go to that person for prayer or counsel? Do you understand what I'm saying is that, that you've, got to, you've got to be smart in this thing. And I, I'm going to say it like this. If I don't see any fruit produced, if I'm not seeing something, something that's godly, 
And, and you know, and I'll see things on Facebook and, and uh, maybe somebody will say, oh yeah, I'll just, uh, you know, so this has happened and so I'm just going to resist the devil and he has to flee from me. And the next thing they post is they're fixing to go out honky-tonking and living it up. You know, it may get quiet in Zion, but I'm going to tell the truth as long as I'm breathing. There, there is a walk to walk and a life to live if you want to see accomplish the things of God. Do you understand? Because what we're doing is, is that either you're, we, we are producing fruit or we're not producing. And so we've got to look at that today. And so well, what are we doing? Listen, I, I ask the Lord, Lord, trim me. Make sure that I don't have old dead branches hanging on me, Lord. Trim me, Lord, the stuff that's unlike you. Take it off of me. Get it out of me. I don't want it. I don't want it. You say, well, my goodness, Sister Barbara, you've been pastoring for years. Yes, because I'm still living in this earthen vessel. See, we all are still living in the earthen vessel, and we've all got a soulish rim to deal with. And so we got to make sure, say this out loud, I'm going to produce fruit. I say that like we mean it. Come on. Yes, I'm going to be the fruit-bearing one. How about that? Amen. So that when we do pray, things happen. Hallelujah. Men get new knees sitting in your store. How about that kind? Boy, that's some good stuff, isn't it? And so, uh, now skip down to, uh, skip down to verse 36. Then Jesus sent them, because there's some more there. You can read. This is good reading for this week for you guys. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. They had no idea. They said, Teach us. In verse 37, it said, He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Okay, so, then, so now then we're looking at Jesus. Verse 38. The field is the world. See, remember when Jesus said that when, when he came into the world, he said, I've come into the world, but I'm not of the world. But he, he was sowing good seed. All right. The good seed, all right, here we go. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Let's say this out loud. I'm the good seed. Ah, there we go. I'm the good seed. And the, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now, this is what I want you to, I want you to look here. That if there are children of God that have been sown in this earth to bring forth and to increase the kingdom, to spread the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, then there are also children of the wicked one that are planted right beside you that look like you and act like you, that they're children of the wicked one. But you say, but Lord, how can we tell? We just read it. Yes. One produces fruit and one doesn't. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Verse 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Now, let me say this. This day and time, it is not a popular message to talk about the devil. It's not popular. In fact, to be honest with you, the majority of churches nowadays don't believe in the devil. They believe that everybody's going to heaven. Everybody's going to heaven. They won't even talk to you about, the, about uh, anything else. But I'm here to tell you that there is a real genuine devil that was booted out of heaven. He lost his place in heaven. And the Bible says, woe unto you in the earth. Where is he? He's roaming to and fro, looking and seeking for someone that he can devour. Have you ever noticed that, boy, things will be going along just fine, and all of a sudden it's like somebody tripped you and you fell, and now you're injured, and now you're hurt, and, and then somebody comes and gives you a message and something's going on with one of your kids, and, and it just keeps going on and on. Do you think that just so happened? No, I'm telling you today that you've got an enemy. And, and listen, if he had the ability to go right up in the house of God and sow seed of wickedness and the wicked ones, I'm telling you today, we got to get smart in this thing. 
We've got to learn how to stand against him and defy him from, from coming after our, our children and our children's children. Amen? Amen. He said, uh, verse 39 said, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. So how long have we got to work at this thing? All the way to the end. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out, out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. So see, that's why you don't need to be judging your, 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 your brothers and sisters or your cousins or, or Uncle Tojo or whoever that is. Don't be in judgment with them because can I promise you there's going to be a day come that when that, that trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise and some, some you know, some got kind of off, off balance there. They think that they're laying out there in the ground. Why, you know what? The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And what's, let me tell you what's going to happen to that body at that sound. Because, see, let me tell you, can I tell them that? Okay. Look here. If, you, uh, if the body wasn't resurrected, the physical body, then you would be, not be like Jesus. You would be like an angel because you would be just a spirit. But see, Jesus' body was gone. Remember on Resurrection Day, his body was gone? Okay. Jesus had to overcome death, hell, and the grave, but he had to do it that the physical body that was given, like at the very beginning when God created man, before man fell, he had a physical body. He had a body that, that was supposed to live forever. And Satan knew that. Come lying to him, got him deceived. But see, when Jesus came up out of the grave and his spirit and his body become one immortal body. And so that's the reason it says that when he comes, he's bringing, bring, do you notice that? He said he was bringing the saints with him. Well, he's bringing them with him. And in a moment, and in the twinkling of an eye, the, gra the graves will open and that body and that spirit is going to become one. And then we will be like Jesus. Amen. See, like right now, right now, all of those that's gone before us, they're, you know, they're spiritual, they're, they're spiritual beings. They're over in heaven. But, you know, you can see through them. You, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're like trans transparent. They're there. But boy, on that day, I'm so excited. Can you even imagine having a body that, that is supernatural, but it's, it's healthy and it's, 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 it's just, it's just, you know, your mind can't, can't even comprehend how that can happen, how that can be. But see, for us to be like Jesus, and he promised us we'd be like him. Does this make sense? Am I, am I making sense with you? Okay, good deal, good deal. All right. And so we know uh, that Jesus is who sowed the seed. And the seed is us, the children of the kingdom. The field is the world. I'm just giving you a reproof here. The tares are the children of the wicked one. And the devil sowed the tares. And how can we recognize them? No fruit. Remember that. How can you recognize if they're tares? Now, you remember, they're going to look like you, and they're even going to be doing nice, nice stuff and, and, you know, doing things that are nice. And, and, you know, that's one of the greatest things that the enemy has to keep people from coming to the Lord. Because you know what? I, I mean, in all the years that, that, you know, when I talk to somebody, they'll go, well, I can tell you right now, I'm about as good as most Christians I know. You know, why would I want, why would I want to come, come to the Lord? Because, you know, look at them. Do you see what I'm saying? The devil will use that. And, and let, me, let me share this with you. See, you've got to be aware that you've got an enemy. But when you try to fight that enemy in the flesh, in the natural, you, you lose. Because, see, the enemy is a spiritual being. And let me show you this. Uh, and I was sharing this with uh, one of my children. That isn't it amazing how you can be going along, everybody's getting along, every, everything's good, and then all of a sudden somebody will say something and the thought will come to you, well, what would she mean by that? 
I know she, I know she was, you know what, I heard her tone. I read the tone on Facebook. Really? Really? You know, you, you, come on now, come on, come on. Y'all, don't leave me up here by myself. You know what I'm talking about. So do you really think this person that you've known all these years and that you love with all your heart would all of a sudden have a tone with you and try to be rude and mean and ugly to you? So I'll say this out loud. It must be the devil, be the devil. planning that thought in me. Do you understand? Now then, let me tell you what. If you cultivate that thought, if you entertain that thought, let me tell you what it'll do. It'll destroy a good friendship. It will destroy relationships. It will destroy families. Do you see what I'm saying? Because the enemy comes. Say that out loud. The enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give life and give it more abundantly. Now, do you believe that today? So now then, the next time that you have that going on, what are you going to do? Entertain it? Oh, yeah, I know it. I know that's just her attitude. I know how she is. I know how she talks, how she treats people. Or are you going to go say this? You know what? You can carry this somewhere else. In fact, you may tell you how to really make the devil mad is do this right here. Oh, Father, I ask you right now to bless Sister Spookendike. Bless her coming in and going out. She must have something going on today. And I just want you to bless her. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to, I've got some, uh, I, I'm going to admit this, uh, you know, because, you know, pastors, one of the things, one of my, my overseers told me one time, he said one of the hardest things being a, a pastor is that you're always in the limelight. Somebody's always watching your life. And they are, you know. But I got to tell you, you know, they say, uh, a good, a, you know, confession is good for the soul. So uh, I don't remember which service, but uh, Jessalyn, we have a one night uh, out of the month that we call it Variety Night. And if you come, if you come on that night, you, you're going to have to get up and say something, you know, we, up to 10 minutes, sing or talk or something, because that's what we call it, a Variety Night. Everybody gets to partake. And so that night, Jessalyn was sharing about a, a walking in love. That, you know, walking in love uh, is more than just words, you know, it's action. Okay, so uh, Shelly and I had gone, we were going shopping and we both were kind of burger hungry. So we stopped in at Dave Burgers and I'll, I'll advertise for them, it's the best burgers in town. And uh, so anyway, we, we stopped in for a burger and, uh, and so uh, we were getting ready to leave and Shelly had got up and she was standing kind of here and it was just kind of a small area and, and this, uh, I looked, this man was waiting to get by and boy, he looked like somebody had hit him with a wet fish, you know, just, you know, it was all frowned up and, you know, and he, he and uh, Shelly turned around and saw him and, and he said, uh, she says, I know, you have to bear with me, I'm a country girl. And so Shelly turned around, she said, oh, I'm sorry. And she got out of the way and, you know, he just looked at her like drop dead and he just walked right past her and never opened his mouth. So I'm standing here. Can I tell you I was standing there judging the man? Now I'm telling you, I'm telling the truth here. I'm standing here looking at this man and here was my thoughts. Why, you rude man. It wouldn't have hurt you to say, oh, no, that's all right, or something, instead of just treating her like some nothing. You know, boy, mama here was about to get her spurs up. Okay, so the, his wife recognized Shelly because she works in a public office. And she, she recognized her, and, oh, boy, you know, hey, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm standing here thinking, wow, she's married to that rude guy. <laughs> you know, I was. I sat there thinking this. And so, look, the woman, because uh, if you drive by my house at 2318 North Shore, you're going to see that I'm overloaded with lights in the yard. And she lived, I found out she lives right there near me. And she said, well, you know, this year I'm not. Put, I've put out a few lights, but I'm not putting out very much because I, uh, my husband can't help me. He has prostate cancer and it's now gone into his lungs. Now then, can I tell you today, it didn't take a bolt of lightning to straighten me up in a moment. 
So my point is, we don't always know what's going on with the other fellow. And that is why that it's very important when we are Christians to walk in love, whether they love or not. See, it didn't say, now, if they treat you right, you treat them right. You know, I was so, I was so upset at that man, I could have easily stuck my foot out. You know, sorry, you know. Y'all know what I'm saying. But see, but see, he's teaching us something here today. But the reason, there's a reason that he wants us to walk in love and to, and to be uh, walking by the Spirit and not by the flesh. And, and uh, it's so we, can, we ourselves can defeat our own enemies. See, it's not, it's, he wants us to live an overcoming victorious life. But if we're up and down, in and out, oh, okay, I'm going to walk for the Lord today, one day, and then three days I'm out. And then two days I'm in, and then two days I'm out. But if you will make a determination, I am going to serve the Lord with my life, period. Then you can begin to walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh and be available to Him. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, turn to Galatians chapter. Are we learning this morning? Okay, turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. We're just going to get a couple of verses there. And, and I'm going to keep saying this too, and I love Sister Lisa says it when she ministers, that uh, always, uh, always uh, have your Bible available when you hear anybody. I don't care if you're watching uh, ministers on TV or listening to them, uh, you know, via uh, audio. Listen, make sure that what they're teaching you is correct because the devil, the devil will, will use a little bit of scripture and a whole lot of something else that's not the word of God. And so you've got to be keen on this. Amen? Amen. Okay, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, 23 says, Now you remember... What the tares, the, uh, how wheat or no, the difference between tares and wheat is because they didn't produce any fruit. Okay, so look at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, the very first word is what? I'm sorry, what was that? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Look at the second one. Oh, you know what? We're all lacking in that one. Don't you, don't, you know what, we get out and go about, <laughs> I'm telling you, sometimes I just want to just grab them and shake them. Are you sure you've been born again? You look like you're lost. <laughs> They're down the dumps and sad and depressed and down and out and, well, I'm just trying to make it, you know. No, no, we are the king's kids. Let's get excited about who we are and what we are. I was nothing. Do you hear me? Nothing. On my way to hell had a path blazed for me. Here comes Jesus bringing his blood, cleansing me, and, and, and bringing me into the kingdom. I say it like this. I was like a kid out in the yard that was all muddy, and he took the water hose, held me up, and just hosed me off. Got all that mud and gunk off of me and said, come on, baby girl, we're going in the house now. And that told her to be all I'm talking about Jesus today. I'm talking about he'll clean you up. He'll bring you in the house. He'll change your life. He'll change the path of distraction you were on. And I'm telling you, he has given you all power and authority and dominion over the enemy. And so stop going around looking like you hadn't got any joy. Get joyful knowing who you are. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, boy, <laughs> goodness, faith, meekness. And can I tell you, meekness isn't you being a throw rope for somebody. Now, you need to get that because a lot of times I believe the reason Christians are sad and down now is because they think they've got to take everything that comes along. They've got to put up with everything that comes along. There's one thing, the reason I follow Jesus is because he's my hero. He stepped into a room that they were selling goods in his daddy's house. And he braided a whip. He didn't have nobody help him. He didn't have any backup. And he ran them all out and turned over their cage. And he said, you will not, you will not use my father's house to sell your goods. That's my hero. 
You know what we would have done? We'd have been sitting in a corner. Well, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to upset nobody. I just have to take it. Maybe we can get around the bird cages and get to the, to the altars. But that's not what Jesus did. So don't, don't mistake meekness that you got to put up and take, take junk. See, meekness is you bowing before the master of the universe, not before man. And, and so you got to keep that in front of you because if the devil can find one door to open to beat you back and to put you down and to keep you quiet and to keep you from walking the word of God, whatever that door is, that's a door he's going to come through. You understand? Okay. Meekness, temperance. And temperance is, is a very essential thing in the, in the house of God, in the kingdom of God. I say it like this. There are some people that they're so spiritually minded they're no good in the earth. They are, they're not. Or either they're so earthly minded, they're no good in the kingdom. And so he's asking us to have balance today. To be temperate in all things. Well, what does that mean? That means that he play. if I'm still in this earth, then I'm in this earth to enjoy the earth, his creation. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, I'm not talking about getting out so in this, uh, sin. I'm not talking about sin, and I'm talking about enjoying this earth. Let me tell you something. I love driving, you know, I love driving up in the hills and just seeing the beauty of the trees changing leaves. You know, just, just enjoying this place. But if you're so spiritually minded, all you can do is sit and read the Bible and pray 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know what? You're no good in the earth. Do you understand? Let's say this out loud. I want balance in my life. And I'm going to be temperate in all things. Amen? All right. All right. Did we get that one? Okay. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. There, there's no law against, against this. Isn't that good? Okay. So now we know what we're looking for to determine whether it's wheat or tares. Amen? Okay. Now turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. <clears throat> chapter 5, verse 6 through 9. That's all we're going to get on that one. Okay, so now then we're, we're talking about today how to get rid of the enemy. That's what we're, this, I had to lay you some foundation first, and this is what we're talking about. So look at verse 6. The first thing that we're going to do is humble yourselves. And when you start thinking, I'm all of that and an order of fries, you need to get back to the altar. Amen? Yeah. You know, I'm Mr. and Miss Spiritual. Woo, I've got the word in me, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm. When you start hearing yourself that the majority of your, your sentencing is I, yeah. you need to go ask the Lord to, to, uh, to renew you and, and to forgive you for being Mr. and Miss High and Mighty. Yeah. Amen. Amen? So my first step is to humble myself before the Lord. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So, see, I don't have to worry about myself being exalted. Why? Because I belong to him, and if I humble myself to him, he takes care of all that. Hey, Amen? Verse 7. Okay, so I've got to humble myself before him. But here's the second step. Casting all. Do you notice he didn't say some of it? Casting all your care upon him. But see, listen, he created us to be workers and to put, you know, put our hands to, to the plow, if you will. He, he created us to accomplish things and do things. He gave us a mind to think with. And so you know what we do as human beings? We carry like 75% and we give him 25. Okay, Lord, here's my care, but I'm going to take care of this. You know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to straighten them out and I'm going to get this done and blah, blah, blah. And thank you, but here's my 25% of my trouble. But see, that's not what he sent us today. And I'm trying to teach you how to defeat your enemy. Because first of all, I've got to humble myself before this mighty God. And then I, in, in doing so, I've got to let him have everything about my life. Everything. 
Casting, casting means to throw. Has anybody in the house ever went fishing? You know, y'all know I like to fish. When I get in heaven, I'm going to hook them up too. I want y'all to know that. I don't have time down here. I'm, I'm too busy fishing for men. But I'm telling you up there, I'm going to be fishing. Y'all better get ready. I'm going to catch something that long. I'm just telling you. You say, well, I don't even believe there's going to be fishing in heaven. Well, then, then why did Jesus say pray like this? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Why did he pray like that? I believe heaven's got fields and streams and mountains. I'm telling you, it's the most beautiful place. I'm te- the more I talk about it, the more I want to get there. <laughs> I'm telling you, look here. But he said, cast all your care upon him. And the reason is because he cares for you. It's what it says, for he cares for you. Yeah. Verse 8, be sober. And uh, let me tell you, I looked up in the original writing, the, the Hebrew and Greek writings. On be sober. And you know, um, now again, when he says be sober, uh, one part of that is don't, don't be uh, in excess of wine, which means, can I tell you this? How would it be if I was standing up here tipsy today? Trying to tell you, look here, Jesus is the Savior soul. Do <laughs> you, know, you know how many people I'd reach? Zero. Zero. So he's saying to you, do not do this in excess. Now listen, Jesus is the very one turn wine, in, I mean turn water into wine at a wedding. But he's advocating uh, you need to you need to stay in your right mind here. Amen. Okay, so that's one part of being sober. But the other part was, I love this. It said, be discreet. So then when he's telling me how to act and how to be, he's telling me to be discreet, to be careful of appearances and to be tactful. Well, see, when he said be careful of appearances, he's not talking about a clothesline. That's not what he's talking about. Okay, the Bible says to shun the very appearance of evil. And you, you know, okay, I'm just going to go there because y'all know the Lord brought me out of a deep place out there. So it'd be like me saying, well, I'm going to... I'm going to go down here to the, to the nearest bar. And, uh, and I'm not going in there to do nothing. I'm not, I'm not going to be drinking. I'm not going to be chasing. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to go hang out with them. And then here comes, here, here you come driving by, and I'm walking out of that place. Do you mean tell you as a human being what you do? The first thing you do, get that phone. You are not going to believe this. I saw Sister Barbara coming out of. Okay, so even though I was innocent, but I didn't have any business hanging out there. Do you understand? See, I'm, not, I'm, I'm telling you today to not let your good be evil spoken of. Do you understand? Okay. Be vigilant because, because, here we go. You ready? Your adversary. Say my adversary. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Do you have a devil looking to devour you? It just says it real clear right here. Verse 9, whom resist steadfast in the faith. What did he say for us to do to him? Resist him. That's my job. That's not a job. You know what? Sometimes we get lazy. Well, I'm just sitting around waiting for God to get that devil off of me. You know what? God forgive us how crazy we act sometimes. Amen. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And that's the next step. The devil will whisper to you every time, you're the only one going through this. You're all by yourself. And let me give you the next one. Nobody understands. Nobody. And you start writing out your invitations for your pity party. Y'all come have, I've got a pity party going on. Come join me. 
But see what he said? He said, you're no different than anybody else. What's going on for you is, has already, it's going on in everybody else. So stay steadfast in your faith. Don't you move. Don't you get sidetracked with what's going on with Aunt Sally. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so what I got to do, I got to resist the devil. And I got to stay steadfast in my faith. And I got to make a decision that I'm not going to let my good be evil spoken of. Amen. 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 Next scripture is James chapter 4, and it's only one verse. That's all you're getting is one verse right there. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 7. One verse. Here's our next step. You ready? Here we go. Submit. And that, for those of us who have wiry natures, is one of the hardest things for us to do is submit. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist, there's that word again. So if I submit myself to God, my next step that comes, that, that is mine, this is mine, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. But see, if I don't submit myself to God, I'm just doing my own thing, living my own life, being, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to throw a scripture out. Oh, well, I'm just going to resist the devil. I'm telling you, the devil will not only be back, but he'll bring seven more worse than he is to your doorstep. So what are we going to do? We're going to submit to God. Let's say that out loud. I submit my life to God. Totally. Everything about me. The good. The bad and the ugly. I give it all to him. And now you can resist the devil. And see, the devil doesn't have a choice. And listen, don't be chit-chatting with the devil. Jesus did. Don't be holding conversation. You know, back in the old days, so y'all know this is going to make y'all laugh that's ever been in a Pentecostal realm. But back in the old days, you know, they'd get them down the floor and boy, they'd be screaming, I'm not coming out. You know, and they'd carry on. And dear Jesus, you're scared to death. But you know what? The Bible says, cast the devil out. It didn't say chit-chat. It didn't say give him the floor. It didn't say nothing. You know, and I'm going to say this. I had a woman one time come to my service. It was years ago over there. And uh, she was known to go around and take over church service. She'd come down the altar at the beginning of service. And then, you know, she's supposed to be filled with the devil and start acting crazy. And uh, so, you know, here she come. Come down to the altar. And, and, uh, and I do have my altar. It's just back there now. But uh, she came down to the altar and, and, oh, she started carrying on, you know, and I just walked over there to her. You know, y'all know me. I just, you know, I'm not going to let the devil disrupt service because Jesus wants to do things in his house for his kids. And I just walked over there and tapped her on. I said, hey, get up from there and stop that acting like that. The devil's not allowed in this place. And I just went right on with service. I'm telling you, she shut up, got up, and went and sat down. You know what? I'm telling you today, don't you let the devil take. Well, it was the devil using that woman. I said, was the devil using that woman to disrupt that service? Because, see, there were miracles to be had. There were people in that service that needed healing and miracles and deliverance. And if he could take that one person and just use her to, to you know, uh, get everybody's attention and all that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, you got power and authority and dominion standing right here sitting in this place or, or via live stream. You know why? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Amen. You know, our goodness is like filthy rags in the face. But oh, but listen here. Once that you receive Jesus Christ, he makes you the righteousness. <laughs> Whoa, hallelujah. Cleaned you up and set you up. Set you up for greatness in this earth. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Last scripture, Matthew chapter 10. So now then we know we got to submit to God and resist the devil. He's not going to go away by himself. I can promise you that. You can think it all day long, but what are you going to do? You're going to start getting those words in your mouth. Get away from me. I'm telling you this. There have been many times, many times. Uh, I can tell you this. A week ago Sunday, I was supposed to fly to Oregon and uh, preach a funeral. Uh, my best, one of my best friends, my prayer partner. 
and I was supposed to fly to Oregon that week, and then my sister passed, and, but on a week ago Sunday, I laid down, I was tired, and I felt fine, we had great service, I laid down, and, and I actually, actually went to sleep, I don't usually sleep during the day, because usually I'm too wired, <laughs> but about an hour and a half, I slept, and when I got up, I couldn't speak above a whisper, and I felt like somebody hit me with a freight train, and you know what I said to Jackie, I am under an attack, I have been attacked by the devil. And you know what I say out loud, whether I can whisper or not, get off of me. You get off of me. You've crossed the line. I belong to God. And you say, yeah, but did you just jump right up and feel great then? No, I'm still in a war. But I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Are you on the battlefield? Are you going to retreat and, and, and wave your white flag and say, I give in, I give up, I just thought. No, Jesus Christ died for you and took stripes for you. Walk in it, live in it, breathe in it. Boy, I'm telling you, there's been many times that I've been under attack. Do you think I went telling everybody? No, I never told a soul. And I, you know, you can ask Jackie, when I'm under attack on my physical body or mental, whatever it is, I'll lay down and put my hands on the core of my body and pray by the Spirit. So I do. Because, see, the Bible says when I don't know how to pray, the Spirit itself, Amen. it will pray what I have need of. Amen. And so how, how is that going to happen if I don't allow him to? Amen. So that's what I do. So I'm just teaching you. When you have something come against you, get somewhere and get still before the Lord. You know what that's called? Casting my care on him. You get still before the Lord. I'm submitting to the Lord. And I'm letting the Holy Spirit pray through me. And so what I do, I just get real still. And I just pray by the Spirit for a few minutes until I know that I know how to pray in English. And then I pray in English. And I'm telling you, he's still healing me to this day. I'm telling you, he is our healer. It's not a little fable, not a story. And you say, yeah, but that one time I tried and I stood for two weeks and it didn't happen, so I quit. Well, stop doing that. Get your mind made up. You know what? Here's my mind. On my dying breath in this earthen realm, I will be saying, Jesus Christ is my healer, my deliverer. That'll be the last breath I breathe. You know why? Because I'd like to rather face him believing than face him doubting. Wouldn't you? you really? Do you want to draw your last breath and say, well, it's happened again. I'm, I'm just, huh? Or is that how you want to face him? Boy, not me. Not me. I want to face him with faith. Unmoving. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's look. I, I bet everybody's there but me. Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Don't you love the Word of God? <clears throat> Matthew 10, I've only got two verses and then we're done. So then we're, we, we know we've got to submit to God and we've got to resist the devil, devil and don't give up, don't sit down, don't move. Whatever that you're in a battle with, you've got to see yourself victorious on the other side. Yeah. You have to see yourself there. Can you see yourself in victory today? Can you see yourself overcoming Every obstacle, every, everything that the enemy brings against you. Can you see yourself there? Because that's called faith. Amen? Amen. Okay. Chapter 10, verse 7. And as you go, preach. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. Yes, you are. Any time that anyone has received Jesus Christ... And they have the very Spirit of God living in them now. You are now a preacher. Now, there's a five-fold ministry that, you know, that God calls. But everyone is to be telling everyone about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. As you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And here is the operation of the saints. You ready? Here we go. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. And what does it say to, to do with the devil? Do y'all see this? Cast out. Cast out devils, period. He would not have put that in there 
if he did not give you the authority and the ability through his name. So what are you going to do with the devils that come against you? I'm sorry, what? You're going to cast them out. And when he comes against you with against your faith, what are you going to do about it? You're going to resist him. You're going to press your way through. You're going to, you're going to move him out of your way. Amen? Amen? Amen. No more giving in to pity parties and all that stuff. Cast out devils. Now look at this. Freely you have received. It didn't cost you nothing. It didn't cost you a dime. Nothing. Freely you have received. So what are you going to do with it now? Freely give. Amen. Okay, so then next time, you know, your brother, sister, cousin, whatever calls you, telling you what all they're going through. What, and, you know, your heart hurts for them because they really are going through this stuff because the devil wants to move them off the earth. So what are you going to do? Are you going to chime in with, girl, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I had that stuff last week. Is that what you're going to do? Come on now, you know how we act. No. You're going to say, let, let me tell you something I learned. I learned this down at the Lighthouse Church. That all you got to do is submit to God and resist the devil. And he don't have a choice. Amen. He does not have a choice. He has to flee. And so you and I are going to come in agreement. Because the word says that where two will come in agreement with anything that's touching anything, that God will be in the midst of it. And all it takes is two. Say that out loud. All it takes is two. So I'm going to find me somebody that also believes that God is real and that he works and that he'll deliver me and he'll save me and he'll do all the things he said he'll do and come and agree with him. And look here, when she calls you next week and says, <coughs> I still, I'm still got it, I guess it didn't work. What are you going to do? No, you're going to come right back and say, yes, ma'am, it does work. And listen, we're still standing against the enemy and I want you to begin to praise him for what he's already done. Do we get it? Yes. How do we get rid of the devil? Resist him. Cast him out. Stop putting up with him. Amen. 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 Stand your feet. Hallelujah. Who, my goodness, I'm excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. And look here. Don't you let old age creep up on you and you say, well, you know, I just got this coming. Because, you know, I'm older now. I'm supposed to be down in my back, down in my feet, down in my, down in my, you know. Stop saying that junk. Those are death words. Amen. Look here, I can show you scriptures. He said that he'll renew, he'll renew your youth. Do you know what youth is? I remember youth. Boy, I could ride bicycles and jump and hop and run and carry on. That was my youth. But here this Bible says that he'll renew my youth. Well, why in the world would I want to get old, decrepit when he'll renew, you, renew my youth? Y'all understand? Because, see, the devil comes to kill. Still, the minute, you know what? I got to tell you this. I had a customer years ago, and uh, I had to have her driver's license for something. I don't remember. Maybe setting up a counter or something. Anyway, this woman I would have thought was at least 80, at least, you know, because of the way she talked and acted. Yes, girl. She'd come in there. I'm telling you right now, I'm just, you know. And that day she said, I've, I just had a birthday. I turned 60 years old. And I'm sitting here thinking, are you for real? Oh, my God, she's just half her age. Because, you know, the Bible says that we can live to be 120 if we want to. I thought, honey, you're not going to make it very long. But see, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say we have to get old and decrepit and can't move, can't walk, can't, 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 can't. But see, okay, then I'm going to ask all of us, but are we standing on that scripture? Are we speaking that scripture that he's re he is renewing my youth every day? He is, not me. I can't do it. But he is. Are we standing on that? Or are we just taking what the enemy's bringing to us to shut us up and put us in a corner somewhere? Come on, saints. It's time to come alive in Christ. It, it's, it's time for us to get renewed in him. Amen? Amen. And are you battling a sickness or a disease that you've been battling a long time, years? Because, see, the enemy loves to wear you out. But, see, get back in front of you. 
Okay, can I say that? Yes. Yesterday is gone. Say that out loud. Yesterday is gone. gone. I can't get it back. back. It's past. It's It's behind me. And so I'm not going to let it affect me. Say it. I'm not going to let it affect me. Let's do it like we mean it. I'm not going to let it affect me. Today's a new day. Because the word says that every morning my mind is renewed. Is it? Say you got to believe it, receive it, resist the devil, submit to God and live a victorious life until he comes. Amen. Amen. Are we singing? Hallelujah. Victory, victory, it is mine. Oh, victory, victory, it is mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Victory, victory, it is mine. Joy, joy, it is mine. Joy, joy, it is mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battles. Joy, joy, it is mine. Healing. in victory amen is anybody in the house that needs prayer before I let you go all right wait wait okay Uh-huh, uh-huh, see right there, there it is. All right, if you believe what we've been talking about this morning, stretch your hand toward Shelly. The Bible said, if there be any sick among you, call the elders of the church, lay hands on them, anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith shall be, not my be, but shall be. And so her daughter has, um, uh, what's it called, eczema? Eczema really bad on her arms and hands. And, and if you know someone else, see, there's no private interpretation of the Bible. Isn't that good? Amen. All right, let's pray. Pray in faith. You ready? Kirsten and Grayson has it. Get down here. Stand in here. Is anybody else in the house got eczema? Get down here. Any kind of skin. And it can be caused from asthma. Do you hear that? If you've got anything going on with your skin this morning, get down here. The Lord's fixing to change it. He's fixing to heal you. Hallelujah. Just make a line there, Judy. Get up in line. Yes, get these babies in line. Huh? Boy, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this wonderful? God's fixing to move in the house. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. You ready? You stand there. You help and pray? All right. Here, start laying hands. Come on, stretch your hands up here. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you that according to your word, according to your word, Lord, that our skin is pure and perfect. Just want to thank you for that promise. Want to thank you, Lord, that even as the child, as the uh, uh, the three Hebrew boys began to teach and 
and uh, stood for you, Lord, that you talked about them, their skin being perfect and pure and that you are the old time God. And I thank you, Father, that what you do for one, you do for another. Just want to thank you for that. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I come against any skin disease, any, any, uh, anything that is stemmed from uh, lungs or whatever it stemmed from, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I curse it. I curse it. Lord Jesus says you curse the fig tree I curse the root of that thing in the name of Jesus come off of them in Jesus name thank you Lord glory I thank you Father for, uh, for healing Lisa's children grandchildren I thank you Lord for healing this baby in the name of Jesus that his skin is perfect and pure I just want to thank you Lord I thank you for touching his adenoids in the name of Jesus right now just want to praise you for that right now in Jesus name thank you Lord yes thank you Lord you're a creator God you're the created God those things that we have need of Lord that you're our creator and I just want to thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. And uh, also, Lord, I thank you for protecting his ears. I thank you for protecting them in Jesus' name. Yeah, right there. Woo, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. My goodness. Thank you, Lord, for touching Judy this morning. Top of her head to sole of her feet. Just want to thank you, Lord. Yeah, right there, receiving. Lord, I thank you, praise you, that blood pressure, you're nothing but a name in the presence of God. And I command you to align yourself, and you will balance yourself this day, not tomorrow, not next month, but you will, you will balance yourself today in the name of Jesus. And uh, also, Father, I thank you for touching him right in the middle of his back, right there in the middle of his spine. I thank you that the power of God surged through him, Lord. I just want to praise you for it right now in Jesus' name. And even down in the hips, Lord, uh, even uh, in that place where it, uh, it feels sometimes like it's just going to lock or it's just not doing right. God, right now in the name of Jesus, I speak the joy of, uh, of, his, of his soul, Lord, uh, and, uh, and gladness, Lord. And I thank you for touching his hips and, and unlocking and I thank you Lord Satan you're a liar you are a father of lies and uh, in the name of Jesus oh yeah right there thank you yeah, boy. just receive it Marty he's all over you Woo, glory thank you Lord Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory. Come on, let's praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Turn it down just a little bit. Hallelujah. Well, did y'all receive this morning? Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, it's so good to be in the presence of the Lord. It's hard to shut this thing down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know what? Um, let's everybody uh, pray for Charlie. Charlie, uh, we, just, we just send the word with you in this endeavor that you've got in front of you. And, uh, and that God goes before you. And he's making your way straight. That those that need to cross your path will be the right ones. And the things which shall come to pass that's godly. Yes, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for meeting every need that he has. In the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. Oh, my goodness gracious. Hallelujah. Yes. You need prayer, Loretta? Okay. Here, I'll turn it.
praise God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, it's all. <laughs> you know it, don't you? <laughs> don't you love it when he just shows up and fixes you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. How wonderful it is to serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs> well, praise God for Jesus. All right, are you ready for your blessing? All right, here we go. Say it like you mean it. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the, blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to. God causes it to prosper. God causes it to prosper. Our, children Our children shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and the powerful word of God and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I am full Filled up and running over with health, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, and nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen.